Hi, I'm Terry Virts, and I'm going to take you on a tour of the International Space Station. I'm starting at the front end of the station in the Japanese module, Kibo. And this is the airlock where we can take equipment, satellites, and other hardware, put it inside, and send it outside to do experiments on the exterior of the station without having to do a spacewalk. It's pretty cool, and right now there's something called a robotic refueling mission hardware in there where we're going to practice refueling satellites robotically. Just above the airlock, there's a module called the JLP, or our logistics platform, and uh, it's basically a stowage module. It's super important. It's very important to keep um, a lot of the equipment and hardware that we need to run the space station up in that module. The rest of the Kibo is a very advanced and very modern laboratory. There's um, different life science experiment modules. There's a microscope. There's some material science modules. And uh, scientists can fly up experiments. They stay on the station for usually a few months. And uh, we run them. And then we send the results or the samples back down to Earth to get analyzed. Or we can do the analysis right here in space. Like I said, there's a microscope. So the, the Kibo is a very modern and very advanced scientific laboratory. There's a freezer, we call it Melfi, it's uh, minus 95 degrees Celsius in those four big circles. And then there's a centrifuge right here where we can take plant or biology samples and have some of them at zero G and then spin some of them in the centrifuge at one G or other gravity levels and uh, compare, really compare what the effects of gravity are. Let's go into node two now. Okay, this is the very front center of the station. In front of me is Columbus module. It's very similar to Kibo. Uh, it's a very modern laboratory. There's lots of different experiments in there. A lot of our human research is done inside of Columbus. Uh, and there's, there's various other experiments and modules that they do in there. Um, right now we have a lot of equipment and hardware here stowed, getting ready to return on SpaceX. And this is where some of our cargo ships, the SpaceX Dragon, Orbital Cygnus, and also HTV docked to this port right there. And uh, these ships bring up lots of cargo and then take back trash and also equipment. SpaceX has the ability to land on ground. So it's a uh, great capability that we have. Right here in Node 2, this is where we live. These are our crew quarters. And I'll give you a quick tour of mine. Uh, these things are great. It's kind of your own personal space. You've got your laptop, pictures of your family in there. Got some, I just got a care package, so I got some candy on the wall. Um, it's my closet. That's where I store t-shirts and ready for tomorrow. And here's my uh, sleeping bag, which is really nice to sleep in space. This thing just kind of floats, floats uh, free. It's, when I sleep, I don't sleep with it tethered. And... Uh, it's pretty cool being in complete darkness, floating, and very comfortable. The other night, the station did a maneuver, a 90-degree pitch up, and it woke me up. Um, <laughs> when the station maneuvered, it, I banged my head against the wall very gently, but it was uh, something that woke me up. We are moving backwards towards the U.S. lab. Again, a lot of experiments happening in here. Um, we can do, we have another Melfi and several other freezers to freeze biological samples. This right here is one of our most important. It's called MSG and it's a glove box. You can put your hands inside and um, do work on experiments that you wouldn't want to uh, get loose. So we have um, different experiments that we do in there. And they're contained safely behind the glass. And uh, it really allows us to do hands-on, human-in-the-loop science and not just uh, having a box that you turn on and don't ever do anything with. Behind these racks, there's a combustion rack and a fluids rack, and, and that's pretty, very interesting science to learn about the fundamental physics behind how fluids behave and how fire happens, how combustion happens. On the right here is our bike. This thing is called Sevis. It's, it's wrapped up right now, but there's some pedals. <clears throat> You'll notice there's no seat. You just sit there and pedal, and at the uh, you can get a pretty good workout on it uh, just by pedaling and hanging onto these handrails right there. 
This is our robotics workstation. And so when we need to reach out and grapple one of those cargo ships, we do it from either from right here or in the cupola. There's an identical station over there. But this uh, control station allows you to move the arm on the outside of the space station, which is pretty cool. It's one of the more fun things that we do. This is the US lab. This is node one. This is the central hub of the space station. This is where we keep our food. Here are some of our food boxes, vegetables, meats, breakfast, fruits and nuts, side dishes. Um, this has been here since 1998, so it's uh, almost 17 years old. And here's our airlock, and there's two spacesuits set up, ready to go, and we've got two more in the, in the <coughs> crew lock part of the airlock. Um, this is where I did three spacewalks in February, and uh, we get suited up in this near part where the suits are on the stands right now, and then once we're ready to go and all the equipment is in the crew lock part, which is where all that stuff is stuffed in there, uh, we go in there and get um, the air out. The air comes out of that area. We shut the hatch behind us and then open the other hatch and go outside. Here we are in node one. It's the central hub of the space station. This is some of our food boxes. We have meat, vegetables, side dishes, breakfast. This is where we keep our food. Um, this is where we do spacewalks from. This is the airlock. And you can see the two spacesuits right there. They're ready to go. When it's time to do a spacewalk, we come in here and get suited up. It takes a few hours to go through that process. Uh, we make sure all the equipment is in the crew lock area. Right now there's some green bags and uh, a couple of other spacesuits stored in there, but on the, on the real spacewalk day, it would look about like that, so you can see how crowded it is in there. And uh, we would close the hatch behind us, take all the air out of there and put it back in the station, and then open up the hatch to go outside. That's the airlock. It's a fun but very, very busy process and very work-intensive process. This is our food warmer, so we can warm up food and we have uh, several freezers on the station like I talked about, so you can make your drinks cold and um, so there's a little bit of ability to do that. This is our table. You can see there's a lot of forks and spoons and some food left out. And uh, down here is what's called PMM. It's kind of our basement. It's a stowage area and it's really full right now because SpaceX just showed up. Uh, when SpaceX leaves, a lot of that stuff is going to go home with it. Okay, we're going into node three now, one of our main living areas. This is the treadmill, which you can see is on the wall, which is really cool in space because you can just rotate yourself. And uh, all of a sudden now what, the, what used to be the wall is now the floor. And uh, you can hold on to this handrail. We use these bungees right here to strap us down and give us some weight so we can run. And it's sort of like running on Earth. It's pretty close. Um, flip around back to the other orientation. This is the bathroom right here on the right. Uh, this is obviously one of our most important pieces of equipment. You'll find all the normal things you have on Earth except for the toilet's a little bit different. It comes in two parts. There's the can and then there's a hose and the key part of both of those things is that we use airflow to make sure everything goes in the right direction. We don't have gravity to help us out and uh, we, we use airflow to make sure stuff is moving in the correct direction. This thing right here is called ARED. Again, we're 90 degrees off, so I'll rotate us. And ARED is one of our most important pieces of equipment also. It's got uh, a bar and it uses a cylinder system. So behind these two um, black panels there's uh, cylinders that has a vacuum in each one and you can dial up the amount of weight you want and with that bar and on this uh, floor down there you can do bench press squat deadlifts uh, there's a cable that you can do curls and crunches and basically all the the standard exercises that you would do in a gym on earth we can do up here and it really is just tremendously helpful it keeps us in shape 
and allows us to get back to Earth in good shape and kind of hit the ground running when we get back to Earth. Um, below Node 3 and just behind ARED is everybody's favorite module. This is the cupola. And this is where we can see our beautiful planet from. Our galaxy, our stars, other planets. This is an amazing, amazing observation deck. We have uh, a lot of cameras we keep up here for taking pictures of the Earth and other things. Um, we have a computer that can tell us where we're at over the Earth. It's called World Map. And there's another robotic workstation right here. Like we have in the lab, this robotic workstation in here is um, what we use to grapple vehicles. And you can see there's a SpaceX right there. And uh, just uh, about a week ago, we reached out and grabbed it with a big robotic arm and attached it to the space station. We'll just do a nice 360 degree turn here. Show you the view that you get from the cupola in space. We're coming into morning, so there's the, the dark night is passing and it's morning again in space 16 times a day there's my ride back to earth i'll be back on the home planet in two weeks in that vehicle right there we'll just watch the planet go by here for a minute All right, we are back in node one, and I'm moving aft towards the Russian segment. This uh, node one was the first American module. We're in what's called PMA-1, a pressurized mating adapter, which is the connector between the US and Russian segments. And I'm moving into what's called the FGB or FEGAB. And it's a uh, cargo module. There's lots of things stowed in here. Um, is built by the Russians, but technically it's a U.S. module. And it was the first piece of the space station launched in 1998. From the FGB, I'm going down towards the Earth in what's called MIMADIN, or, or MRM-1. And uh, this is kind of a side module on the Russian segment, and it's the module to which my Soyuz is docked. So we will float all the way down into my Soyuz. We are now inside the Soyuz. This is the BEO, or kind of the orbital module. Uh, when we undock, we're only gonna spend maybe a few hours at most in here. And I'm going down into what's called the SI, or the Spuskaimi Apparat, which is the ascent and descent module. So for launch and landing, this is where we're at. You'll get a sense of just how crowded it is. There's my spacesuit and my seat. And this camera just basically does not fit around the corner. Um, it's a very tight fit. Let's see if I can squeeze in here. This is Anton's seat, he's the commander of the Soyuz, and there's Samantha's seat. She's the flight engineer. And here I am on the hatch into the SI. So this gives you a sense of just how tight and how small the Soyuz is. You can see the control panel right there. This is the view that Anton has. And uh, that's the flight engineer's side. And this is my side over here, the controls and displays that I have. And these are some of our checklists that we'll use for launch or for landing and also for uh, emergencies. And you have a little view out the window. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. Although when you're strapped in, it's kind of hard to see out. But it's not too bad.
All right, we're gonna do a little Superman flying here through the MRM-1, up into the FGB, and down towards the service module, which is the heart of the Russian segment, and it's kind of a control center of the space station. And it is where, if there's an emergency or some type of uh, issue going on board the station, that's where we all gather. The central post. This is the Russian central post of the service module. And this is our table. This is where we often have crew dinners. My crewmate Gennady Padalka, Misha Kornienko. Misha's going to be here with Scott Kelly for a year. And in the back is a progress cargo vehicle through that hatch right there. We'll go take a look at that real quick. Izvinigena. What? So the progress looks exactly like a Soyuz on the outside, but on the inside, as you can see, it's not. It's uh, basically full of stuff. It's, it's not designed for people, and uh, all of their space is taken up with cargo with food and other equipment that we need to launch. And then when we're done, after usually a several month stay on board the station, uh, it's packed up with trash and goes back and burns up in the atmosphere. Okay, I'm back looking at the FGB from the SM. And from here, you can go in two different directions. We can turn and go up into MRM2 Min 2 And that is where another Soyuz is. That's where the Soyuz of Scott and Misha and Gennady Padalka are up there. And the other direction is from, this way is SOADIN. This is the Russian EVA compartment or airlock. You can see their spacesuits right there, Orlan. And if the Russians were gonna do a spacewalk, they would do it from there. This is also where a progress will be docking in just a few days. All right, we're in the SM now. We're going to do a float for the whole length of the station so you can get an idea of just how big this place is. It's pretty big. Going through the FGB. Going through PMA 1, down into node 1. Floating through the US lab. Coming in a node two. And here we are at the end of the tour, the very front of the station. <laughs> 